Hey guys, I'm just playing around my uh, internet connection, cleaning some fibres and doing just general stuff. And um, I thought I'd have a look inside this media converter. This is from NTT Docomo or NTT Data. Uh, it's the kind of the Marbell or the Telstra or whatever um, of Japan, the uh, kind of the, the infrastructure owner. And uh, I thought I'd have a look inside and see what makes this thing, this thing tick. You can see the NTT logo there. It's a um, it's a media converter. So basically, what happens is we get our fiber comes in here, fiber to the home. It's a uh, SC connector, and then coming out of here, we have our Ethernet that goes to our router. That goes to your router that does all the uh, username and password for your internet connection. So it's just a basically a straight through pass through media converter from uh, one thousand TF. I think is fiber TF one gigabit. Fiber to one gigabit Ethernet. So it's a uh, it's a GE ONU and just got the usual kind of display on the front. You yeah, the LEDs for the status, uh, serial numbers and stuff on the back, and it's just a, a grey box that sits there in in a little cupboard or something, and does it does it stuff. So let's pull this thing apart, get into its guts, and see how it works. Here's the guts of the operation. We've got our uh, Fiber connector here, just an inline joiner where our incoming line plugs in here. Just a standard SC style connector. They use a single one here just so they have less cables in the street, I guess. It's receive and transmit on the same fiber. Whereas uh, often you'll see with this sort of setup in a data center or something, it'll have a two there. Like you have a receive and transmit pair. If we come around to the uh, circuit board, I'll show you the uh, receiver in a sec. But on the back here, we've got uh, one chip, and that is a. RAM chip, I believe. It is a Spansion or a uh, Cypress. It says Spansion on there. It must be a brand name of the, uh, the actual chip itself, but the uh, manufacturer is Cypress. It's an 8 megabit flash or basically 1 megabyte flash RAM. Pretty small, pretty cheap. Obviously, they wouldn't need too much in a device like this. It's just a media converter. Then if we flip over, we can see all the, uh, the goodies on the back or the front, depending on your point of view. We've got a chip here. This is the uh, this is a RAM chip. It's a Winbond, and it's a uh, SD RAM around about eight megabytes or maybe sixteen megabytes. I'm I'm not sure, um, but I think it's about eight megabytes. It's a bit hard to decode some of the numbers, but this big one here. This is the uh, the brains of the operation. It's an OFN brand. It's an OF one zero 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 one AA. I couldn't find the uh, data sheets on this, but that's going to be just the uh, main microprocessor. Up here, this little one up here, that's what's doing all the laser driver and receiver. Um, that's directly driving the, the laser in this bit here, and there's a receiver in there as well. We'll have a look at that next. That is actually a, a mine speed, an M02098G13. It's a laser driver limiting amplifier, and it's good for up to 2.67 gigabits per second. So I've got a one gigabit connection to my house, but this chip can handle up to 2.67, so Maybe got a bit of overhead for future uh, higher speed connections, but that's not offered in Japan. Generally, just get the uh, standard one gigabit connection. Everyone offers the same sort of thing. So that's connected to this here. You can see this little uh, metal block. The fiber comes in. There's a little strain relief boot there, and just is stuck stuck straight in there. And uh, we've got these pads coming up, like a mylar sort of little flex flex cable there that's soldered down, that's going up to the laser, and then in that block there's going to be like a, uh, a prism or something, so the laser shoots straight through for the transmit, and the receiver getting reflected down into a, a little photo transistor in there which you can see soldered to the, the PCB just, just there. So that's how it's doing the two, it's the same way they do it in a, um, in a CD player, they got the laser and the photo transistor in the carriage head, but it all goes through a series of mirrors and prisms to bounce out one aperture, hit the, the CD or the DVD or Blu-ray, and then come back in the same way and then split off to where it has to go to be, get detected or whatever's happening inside. So that's how that's being worked. Then over here we've got another chip. This one's a Broadcom chip. It's a BCM54612E and it's a, a single port gigabit transceiver. Now this is a bit a little bit interesting. I'll zoom in a little bit. If you can see the traces, I can get that to focus. 
you can see the traces coming off here and coming all the way around. Now you notice there's a little bit of a chicane here and there's a little bit wiggly. That's because they're equal length um, for matched impedance and for the, uh, the timing of the signals. That's the gigabit signal coming from the chip coming around here and it goes through some wires. We flip that over, you can see they're all wiggly quite a bit uh, over here. It's doing it like a zigzag and then over here. This one comes around and back in. That's so they're all equal length so that when the signal is sent from that chip and it reaches the, uh, the socket here, the uh, RJ45 socket, that way the signal is going to be reaching here the same time. If they get out of time, you're going to have to slow down your connection. You won't get the gigabit speed. So that's just make sure that there's no like differences in when the, the signals reach their connection. And uh, then obviously your cable is a twisted pair. And when it plugs into your router or your switch or whatever, it's going to be the same sort of setup. There's also, uh, you can see all the impedance match lines all up through here and around in here. That's the same idea for the uh, timing for the, the data to the chip, to the uh, memory here. That's just so that when you send a, a signal, all the, uh, the parallel or the, the serial signals, they all reach at the same time and get written at the same time and nothing gets all garbled or messed up. So all there is apart from that is uh, the power supply section over here. So we got a couple of smoothing capacitors, some inductors, there'll be some switch mode supplies, maybe like a 5 volt and a 3.3 volt, I reckon. Uh, power comes in over here and that'll be, a, I think that's a 12 volt for memory. So we have like, maybe there's a 12 volt rail that comes straight through and then we got 5 volt and 3.3. And on the back, I've got a little driver chip, the usual uh, diodes for the uh, buck and boost and whatever. And over here we've got a little driver chip just down here and another one just over here. So I'll zoom back out and we get another overview. So that's pretty much what we got inside a NTT data our media converter. Fiber in, comes around, we got our brains with its RAM and its, uh, its flash memory for all its settings. Laser comes in here, gets decoded, demodulated, amplified, whatever, by the chip here which feeds into the brains and then that comes out of the brains through this driver chip and then converts to Ethernet through the uh, standard RJ45. That then goes to your your router or whatever that does all the PPOE and all the you know, your, your login password and username and that that is usual for a uh, internet connection. So I hope you found that interesting. A little bit of uh, Japanese internet technology. And don't forget we've got a Patreon so uh, check that out if you're interested. And we'll see you next time.